All right, so I think we are live, I think. The same we are, so we are. So hello everyone, thank you so much for joining tonight. I'm really excited about this special guest. This month I have been talking about love, loving yourself back to health. What does love have to do with health? Just so many different topics with so many different awesome women who are taking their health back as well. So today I have Miss Samantha, which I'm excited to chat with. Would you mind just kind of giving us a uh, introduction of who you are and what you do and all that good, good stuff? Absolutely. So I'm senior pastor at Kingdom Grace Ministry. I also am the director and founder of Women at Work Empowerment Ministry. And um, I host the Noonday Prayer Evangelism Ministry on Facebook Live um, and a host of other things <laughs> that God gives me to do. So I'm located in the Seattle area and I'm just excited to be here. And thank you so much for having me. You're so welcome. You're welcome. Now, um, I want you all to know that I have met some amazing people just right here on social media. And I had the honor of meeting uh, you at a conference that we both were able to speak at. And so it's been conversation since then. And I'm just honored to be able to interview on you on today. So we're talking about self-worth. If you've ever questioned your worth, wondered, am I worthy? I just have asked Miss Samantha to, Pastor Samantha to just kind of share a little bit on that. What are your thoughts on when it comes to worth and your value and things like that? Because a, a lot of times people hear self-worth and they think it's all about self. Like, what are your thoughts around self-worth? Where does it come from? Just give me a, a, a snippet. Give us a snippet about that. Self-worth is, is how, we, how we view ourselves. Um, we many times, um, especially Christian women, we, we know that the word of God says that we value, that we are valued, that we're worth mm -hmm. more than rubies. We hear yes. that all the time, the Proverbs 31 woman, but we don't apply that to ourselves or we don't see ourselves through that lens. And so we look at ourselves um, through our, you know, our faults and what we, what we think is wrong with our bodies or, you know, or, you know failures or, or different things. And um, and that's just not how God wants us to look at ourselves. And so when we talk about self-worth, we have to value who we are, who we are as women, who we are as, as people. And in valuing ourselves, we show that we have value by how we care for ourselves and um, the relationships mm -hmm. that we allow um, in our lives, what, what kind of people that are close in our circle. Um, we show that we value ourselves by how we live. And so when we talk about, when we talk about um, self-worth, we have to talk about how we treat ourselves. Mm, I love that. I love how you ended how we treat ourselves. So, so that just kind of goes right into what I'd love to ask. You're on your own personal health journey, which is amazing. Um, tell us a little bit about that. How much weight have you lost? How's that journey going? And, you know, just give us some, something on that. Well, the journey has been amazing. Um, I've lost 11 pounds. Yay. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a huge success for me. I've yes. been struggling for the last five years. I've been stuck and I haven't been able to go below this number. Mm -hmm. And I've tried different diets and I've gained weight and, and I lose that little that weight that I gained, but I would go just go down back to that number. It was like I was at a plateau. And my body just refused to go down. And it didn't matter whether I was exercising. I was yes. walking um, uh, 10,000 steps a day and, and, and incorporating this diet and barely eating. And I was mm -hmm. still gaining weight. And, and so I, um, and I'm in that menopause um, phase. And so I had to learn my body again. Mm. So I, I recognized that my body was different because I was, I was always naturally small. And mm. so this whole weight struggle was new for me and I didn't right. like it at all. I was like, I do not like this. I need you to go back how you used to be. <laughs> and it was not listening. <laughs> and so I wasn't in a place where um, I was at peace with that. Yeah. And so I started this health journey um, and I am, you know, I said down 11 pounds, which yes. I, we broke the, the plateau and we were moving on past that. And I'm, I'm going to continue on until I reach my health goals. I'm not going to stop. But 
more yes. so than the weight that I lost is, yes. is the health issues that have changed in my life. So I have struggled with high blood pressure for the mm. last 20 years. I've been on a var variety of medications for it and have done some health changes as far as diet um, changes um, to help with that relaxation. It was still, it was unstable, even on medications, it was yeah. up and down. I have consistently had um, regular blood pressure readings since I've been on this program. And that has been the biggest victory for me. Cause like I said, that's been a 20 year. Mm -hmm. um, wow. And doctors, you know, they, they like to, when they don't know what it is, well, you must be stressed or you, you know, yeah. hereditary, but it wasn't hereditary. And um, I don't, I don't carry stress. So it was yeah. no real explanation. They couldn't help me. But right. That's what they needed to say. Well, sorry, we can't help you. Um, and so to have that struggle over, that's been huge for me. And I was waking up with headaches mm. on a regular basis. I just wasn't sleeping well. Yeah. Uh, my body was not resting when I when I sleep. I'd sleep, but I didn't rest. Right. And so yes, yeah, so I would still wake up exhausted and I'd have yeah. to press myself through the day on a regular basis. Oh, and, I love um, I don't have headaches anymore. I'm able to rest better. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just been a huge change for me. I have higher energy. Oh, I, I love that. Focus better. Uh, I almost don't even care about the 11 pounds. I'm like, I am so healthy. You yeah. gained so much more, right? <laughs> yeah, I gained so much more. And I was also having a swelling in my feet and ankles. And that mm -hmm. swelling is gone 100%. Oh. And I, I look at my ankles and I'm like, I just can't believe y'all are back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, y'all are back. I You're love really it. back. <laughs> oh, I love it. I don't know if y'all picked it up, but she just reversed some stuff in her life. Like we're in the business of pulling people out of what they thought they could not come out of. And yes. that is so powerful. You said so many powerful yes. things. And I want to touch on that one, just one thing that stood out. You said you've dealt with high blood pressure for 20 years can you speak to that really quick the person that's watching this that has been on blood pressure medication cholesterol any of those medications can you speak to them right now who feel yes. they cannot do yes. come off of it or that's absolutely. in the blood <laughs> absolutely so here is here is how i did it how, what god gave me so I truly believe that God has given us the remedy. According mm -hmm. to his word, he's given us remedies. He's given us cures. So I searched God to guide me to what he had that worked for me. Yes. And I do not believe in um, just depending on pharmaceutical drugs. Right. I believe that God has, um, he, he has everything created. He created everything that we need man makes stuff it, it, it's helpful you know if you have right. to have it you know i was on the blood pressure meds right and so if you have to have that to regulate you then do that but i truly believe that there was something that i needed to be guided to to help me with my health with that high blood pressure yeah. and there was no explanation i was i was i looked healthy you know i was slim it wasn't my weight i've never been like obese Right, and I was always um, I wear wear a war between a size five and a size eight. That was my mm. normal size for me, and I had high blood pressure. And right. people would look at me and be surprised. And so it was nothing that that um, I was inflicting on myself intentionally or unintentionally. And I bind every generational curse of my life. So yes. that whole hereditary thing. Even if it was so, it did not apply to me, not in my mind. Yes. It didn't apply to me. It was canceled from yes. the day I accepted the blood. Okay? Yes. And so I believe that God guided me to that place and he will guide you to your remedy. He will guide you to when you are seeking it, when you are truly asking him for it, he will guide you to what will work for you. What right. will work for you. Ask, seek, knock, and, and the door will be open like... It's, yes. It will happen. And yes. so I love, love, love that you shared that. So um, I want to ask, you are a pastor. Why do you feel like it's important for the body of Christ to be, in, to be healthy right now? 
well, it's not good for anybody um, when you're not yourself. I agree. When we, are, when we aren't healthy, it's not, we aren't ourselves. And God has work for us to do. And if we, we can't even take care of the, our vessels, then we won't be able to go forth with the things that God has called us to do. We have to remember that, right. that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. The word of God says we're not our own. Right. That we, we, um, God purchased us, our spirit and our body. Right. And so because he has possession of our body, we have to take proper care for our body. I just um, spoke on um, at a women's retreat last weekend and this came up. And I want to use this example. It's not related to health, but it's related to our bodies belonging right. to God. Mm -hmm. And so the example that we were talking about is I use an example. My little, my grandsons, I have some two grandsons and they learned how to write. So they're writing on walls and stuff. <laughs> and so our, our, um, our subject at that moment was about tattoos. And I told the ladies, I don't believe that you're going to go to hell if you have a tattoo. I right. said, but if we really look at our bodies as God's vessels, they belong to him. We're not going to put any old thing on it. We're not going right. to put any old thing in it. I, yes. said, I, just, I just know that God is um, like I am with my grandsons. You better stop writing on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> right. Boy, if you don't stop writing on my walls. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> grandma's going to get that. you. And so I just know, you know, that um, it's important for us to really um, treat our bodies as though they are not ours. And when we have something that um, an old pastor of mine said this once, and I thought it was kind of humorous, but he said he, somebody had asked him if they could borrow something of his. And they said, I'll treat it just like it, it was mine. And he said, you better not treat it like it's yours. You better treat it like it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we don't need, we need to treat it, treat this like it's his and right. not like it's ours. Oh, that's we, we, we treat it like it's ours. Yes. And so it's important when we treat it like it's his, and we're mm. going to ask him what needs to go in it. And we're going right. to ask him what it, what's, what it takes to maintain it. Even yes. through all the changes, especially as women that, that our bodies go through, God will show yes. us when we ask him about his vessel, Amen. he will ask us how to maintain it. And that's important for the church. That's important for believers. Um, uh, I remember a testimony that a pastor uh, that I had the privilege of visiting his church, he was sharing about how he had went and bought this car. It was a luxury car. And he said, God told him. That, to, that he gave them the approval to go buy the car. And he said, God, now if I go get this, you're going to have to make the payments. And God told him, I'll make the payments. And so he went and he got the car and he was sick and he had to, he had to go on a sabbatical. Uh, I think he said for like a year, he had mm -hmm. to cancel all speaking engagements. Wow. His, I think his brother had to take over the church for a season. He was down for a year and he had those car payments. And he said, God, he said, now we talked about this and you told me that was okay for me to get this car and I'm still making these car payments. And God told him, he said, oh, I, I set everything up for you, for you to make the payments. He said, but you had to cancel every engagement because you didn't take care of your health, because you wow. didn't take care of your body, because wow. you didn't put oh, wow. what was necessary in your body. So it's important for us to take care yes. of these vessels yes. so that we're in position to receive what God has Amen. for us. Amen. And, and we're able to also be used where he wants us to be used. So yeah. when he had to cancel those engagements, the enemy got two birds with one stone. So there were people there that needed to be blessed, that he had their blessing and he wasn't able to release. And then mm. he was going to receive God bless, was going to bless him with the finances, cover that car through all those engagements. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah, so we have to be truly mindful of whose temple this is, and you know uh, uh, the the word of God in Third John it, it tells us you know um, I wish you to prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers, mm -hmm. and so it's important for us to not be out of balance with just focusing on the soul and not focusing on the body. Right. Um, because they should prosper at the same time. We should be growing right. at the same time. Our, 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 our health and our body, we have to be strong. 
And then um, in uh, the scripture that comes to mind is, is Proverbs 31 and mm -hmm. 17, when it talks about the virtuous woman, yes. specifically in verse 17, talks about her girding herself up with strength and her arms being strong. So she's yes. taking care of her body. She's, yes. she's working out. She's eating the right things or she wouldn't be able to do all of the things that she was able to do. Oh, that's we, so good. We, we can't do all of the things that, that we need to do if we're down. So we, oh. and I don't have time to be down. I've got too much to do. We have too I much, mean, right? Yeah. Have too many people to build, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't have time to be down. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I heard you say so much in, in, in all of that, like partnership is what I heard. Really deciding that you're going to partner with God and, and take responsibility for your part of what you're supposed to be doing. And God is going to partner with you and help you accomplish it. But we can't just say, okay, God, it's all on you. And I don't do anything because that's just not going to work. So I love that you pointed that out. And the reason I want to say too, when I said, why do you think it's important for believers to um, take care of their bodies? And I, I phrased that question for a reason. I phrased it because I remember being in a conference once and there was a guy, because I believe everybody should be healthy. I want to make yeah. that very clear. Not yeah. just believers, everybody should right. be healthy. I also believe that believers have a certain level of influence in the earth, right? Exactly. And so um, this guy said to me, he said, I look around and I see pastors in America because he wasn't from America. He said, I see pastors in America that are overweight, overweight. They can hardly walk. He said, I would never want to know their God because doesn't God supposed to live in yeah. you? Like you're not taking care of that. I would never listen to a pastor who doesn't take care of themselves. And I was like, wow, yeah. that was really like an eye opener for me because if people want to know our God, then they, they, they're they looking at us, not just the physical exactly. part, but just exactly. how we live our lives, right? And so that really like resonated with me when I, you know, when I heard that. And so I'm glad that you kind of touched on all of that. Um, so anything else that you'd like to add to, uh, to this or say to someone who doesn't feel like they have hope or doesn't feel worthy of a healthy life? Um, would you like to, to give them some, some type of hope? Well, yes, absolutely. So there's always hope. Um, for you. Don't give up on God. He has not given up on you. Don't okay. give up on yourself because God believes in you. And mm. search God, talk to him and begin making some changes. Some changes we know to make. Some things we know, you know, if we're eating a lot of fried foods, a lot of processed foods, a lot of unhealthy things, we know when we're doing that. So some things we know we can just cut down, drink more water. Um, I drink 64 ounces of water a day and I log it. So I track to make sure I make, meet my goal. Uh, so if we, okay. we're drinking a lot of sodas, you know, we, we, some things we know. So if we do just that, which we know to do, the word of God says, if you, if you know something good to do and you don't do it in the book of James, it's a sin to you. And yeah. so if we, we need to start by just doing what we know to do mm -hmm. and we need to, to uh, feel worthy. God believes that we're worthy. He, he died because he believed that we were worthy. We were worthy for a more abundant life. Part of our more abundant life is a healthy life. Mm. Uh, and the word of God, we're, we're on the first um, commandment with the promise, which is honor your mother and father and you'll have long life. That long life is a long, healthy life. It's not a, it's not a long, decrepit life. Yeah, it's, it's not a long life of yes. suffering and, and sickness and disease. That's not that wouldn't be a blessing if, right. if, if we live long and we live in that condition. So right. God does not want us to live in that condition, and He's given us encouraging words in His right. Word um, to, to 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 help guide us in that area. And so you are worth it. Mm. Don't don't lose hope. If, if I had lost hope. I'd probably be at 174 pounds because that was the plateau I couldn't get under. I'd right. probably be at, 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 at that weight still because I didn't have body given up. Don't give up. There, there, there is a cure for you. There's a remedy for you. And God wants you to believe that it's for you, mm -hmm. to believe that he values you like his word says he does. Yes. And he wants you to value you like his word says he does as well. 
I, love I, I also kind of wanted to just touch on the obese thing that you mentioned, because that is something <laughs> that we really don't address in our churches. Um, yes. And, and there are a lot of pastors that are obese. And, and gluttony is a sin. Mm -hmm. And we need to just call it what it is. And now I know okay. that it's not always overeating, but in many cases it is. It's overeating right. or it's improper eating. It's yes. what we put in the vessels that don't belong to us. Yes. And um, so we really do need to address that. And, and I, I agree. This is awesome. And what you're doing with, with encouraging us to be healthy and, and treat our bodies better. We need this in every church. There needs to be mm -hmm. a health ministry in every church, helping those who may have um, surrendered to the unhealth and unhealthy lifestyle, because that's what happens. We surrender when we when we begin to just allow food to govern us. I remember a man that got say um, one time, "I'm not gonna um, dig my grave with my teeth." Talking about how he eats, right? <laughs> and that just stuck with me. That was years ago, and, wow. and I say that now. I'm not every time I want to veer off. Uh, right. I'm not going to dig my grave with my teeth. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's not, not going to yes. happen. Yes. <laughs> and so oh, we, yes, we need this. We, you see, I've been searching a long time. I got all these nuggets along the way. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I love it. <laughs> but we really need this in all of our churches, you know, and we need to stop overlooking it and acting like it. It's like the elephant in the room. I mean, yeah, everybody I sees it. it. <laughs> everybody sees it. You can't even sweep that under the carpet, you know. <laughs> Every, right, we see it. <laughs> yeah, we, you know, we see that you are, you know, 300 pounds. Yes. Uh, and, and, and to focus, in, instead of focusing on the weight, focus on health. Yes. Focus on getting healthy. When, when my vision changed from that, when my view changed from that, and I, and I focus on getting healthy, it, it's so much more important for us to be healthy. When you're healthy, the weight will leave. Right. Focus on health. So we definitely need ministries like yours and health coaches in all of our churches. Yes. We do, because it's now, evidently a problem. <laughs> It, it is. It is. And I'm so glad that you were open to like address that because it is like so obvious. And, you know, we can come up with all these excuses about, right. everything, you know, but the truth of the matter is we are called to be healthy because that's what scripture says. And if we walk by the truth, then we should walk by what the word says. And it exactly. says that good health belongs yes. to us. So we have yes. to grab hold of that. Um, what did I want to say to you? Oh, you know, I've been praying about this thing. You just said something that really just spoke. Like, you was like, this is needed in all the churches. Do you know that is one of the reasons why I became a health coach? That was That is what God put on my heart is to help people in the church because I saw it. And I always was turned off by it. I could not find... Um, I thought that working out, working out, working out, you know, taking diet pills would do it because I, I gained weight at one point. And it was hard for me to get it off. But when I found this, it worked, right? But even with that, for those who are in the church who are trying every every single thing and they have yeah. given up, like I believe that there is hope for people. So I'm so glad that you addressed it and talked about it because it's so needed. Um, and for me, I believe that it shows integrity kind of sort of because if we're yeah. if we're walking by the word if the word exactly. says it then we need to yeah. live it so i appreciate you for just taking the time to do this um did you want to say something else i i think we're good okay yeah. okay all right <laughs> well, you had another question <laughs> no 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 that's it okay. um, those are the things i wanted to talk about and you nailed it um hopefully someone i know someone was helped by this and someone has has gained some hope and so if you're looking to get healthy honestly like what are you going to do about it are you going to continue yeah. to go in the same direction or are you going to decide that you're going to change it you've heard uh pastor samantha's story her testimony and i just believe that people overcame because of the word of what what's the scripture i'm not going to butcher that scripture <laughs> and overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony. Is that it? Exactly. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So her testimony is powerful. So listen to it. If you're catching us just now, go back and watch the replay. Thank you so much, Pastor. I appreciate you. And I look forward to chatting with you very, very soon. So do I. <laughs> All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye, -bye.